Alrighty, so implementation this week was built out by uh, Drew Rockbank and JP on the development side. Um, this is a uh, automated call summary generation using CRM, PhoneBridge, and uh, OpenAI and ChatGPT. So really the core goal here was to build out an automation that could create call summaries automatically when call logs were added to CRM. Um, so one of the things with PhoneBridge is that when you connect most telephony options, like for example, Ring Central, you have the option of actually turning on um, that the recordings log inside of CRM. Um, important thing to note, they don't really store the file there. They kind of reference the recording URL and embed it in the call so you can listen to it, but it's technically not stored in CRM. Um, what this does, though, is it does give us the necessary information that we need to go reach over to the Ring Central API and get that file, the recording of that call. Then the call basically sends that MP3 file to ChatGPT, where we've built a bot that is um, essentially ready to receive uh, audio files and create audio summaries of them, you know, like what happened on the call what was discussed, any action items, right? And then it responds to our function with that call summary kind of formatted for us. That summary can then be stored in the CRM in like the description of the call field. If you wanted to, let's say, go through a uh, spot check some of the calls with the manager every week, or you can even take that response formatted into an email and send it directly out to the client as a summary of the call that you just had. Um, so really nice. I mean, some of these tools like Fathom for Zoom are able to do this natively for like a, you know, digital meeting. Um, but things like, you know, telephony services, this is not as common in terms of functionality that's supported. Yeah. So I had yeah, no really nice idea just to be able to pull that summary out. I had no idea that ChatGPT could even uh, listen to an audio yep. file and transcribe it. That. It I mean, it's doing yeah, more it's than that. OpenAI, I'm pretty sure it's ChatGPT. It might be a different service provided by OpenAI, but I'm pretty sure it's a ChatGPT that does it, that just listens to it and then gives out that summary um, back to you. And again, like for this build, we were sending it out as an email, but you could really store it anywhere that you want um, within the system. Wow. Again, only dangerous thing here, if it is going to send it as an email, is like hopefully it's all correct, right? Like I'm, I'm sure DC recently on the... I think it was a, a Chevy Chevrolet dealership had a chat bot that was powered by chat GPT and the user convinced the bot to sell it a, to agree to sell it a car for $1. Um, <laughs> so they had to shut down the bot and void the contract and everything. But uh, so always be a little careful whenever you're sending something from a chat bot directly to a person, there's always going to be a little bit of risk. Um, I wonder but if that was a person. I wonder if that was a person dealing with or a chat bot dealing with the chat bot. If a person wrote a bot to negotiate with the bot and, you know, got that down to a dollar. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> you know one. Crazy. That's pretty good stuff though. I mean, I, I just no idea. That, that it seems like more and more the capabilities of uh chat GPT that are blowing me away. We did something the other day where it was looking at basically it said, here's an article that we're gonna post on the website on this website look at this website and find articles that we may want to cross link into this article and i thought chat no way it'll do that you know you have to, to say use bing right um but anyway it did it it basically came back and said here are three articles you want to cross link and here's where you want to cross link them and it's crazy the power of these things i will tell you what i'm not hearing though is that there are um, usage limitations. It will time out. It'll say, "Sorry, you're done. You have to wait two hours. You can't use it. You're you know you're at a timeout. You've been yeah. overusing it." And I'm wondering how these companies that are actually posting it, using it, doing it for these things, what happens when you hit these kind of like timeout implementations? Um, because they're only charging twenty dollars per month for this thing. I'm waiting yeah. it for be five hundred dollars a month because I think you have a lot of corporations. It's going to get a lot of companies that would easily pay. They pay, hey, here's 500 a month, right? 1,000 a month, whatever it's going to take because um, of the, the usage case for this. So very, very, very cool. All right. 